How are you doing today? Um, I know that you were already in another interview earlier on, and uh, here comes another one. I think it's exciting times for our country. Um, yeah, so this is a chart just so that show people for those going live uh, can see that we are on. Right. Um, let me begin by briefly introducing myself. My name is uh, Fongai Chiposi. Um, I am uh, I was a candidate in uh, the South Atuan constituency as a member of parliament, uh, where I was contesting as an independent. Um, I lost in that contest. Um, we all know independents are not favorites of our uh, country at the moment. I got 639 votes, which I think was quite an achievement considering the environment today. Um, Let's get into the topic that I've invited you here for today. Let's abolish party politics for at least 20 years in our country. Party politics is a cancer that is eating into the fabric of our communities on a daily basis. Polarity caused by allegiances to political parties has torn families apart and spawned hate speech on social media that is dangerously spilling into our communities today. Political leaders are divided along party lines and ensure development of communities and favors go to home areas and party faithfuls at the expense of the nation. Zimbabwe must abolish political parties for at least 20 years to allow the country to heal and for our democracy to mature. Recently, I published an opinion piece titled Chamisa the Dictator. The article highlighted dictatorial traits I had noted in Nelson Chamisa, leader of the opposition MTCA. In the absence of any visible post-election debate by the opposition, it is important that citizens shine lights on the processes and leaders that were in the 2018 race. It is important that as a nation, we do not move from one dictatorship into another, especially after we went through with President Robert Mugabe. Instead of robust debate, I met with personal insults at a scale that astounded me. Predictably, the insults came from Mr. Chamisa's supporters, who now have a cult-like adoration of their leader. The insults extended beyond me to include my family, specifically my wife and my very young son. Even friends took time to lob insults at me as I was firmly labeled the hand of the devil and an agent of Zanopiev. Zimbabwe is yearning for politics of big ideas, not big men. Our communities are in need of servant leaders who will champion development for everyone. We are yearning for leaders who will bring clean water into our homes, create jobs for all, fix our roads, and collect waste from our homes. We want leaders who will attend to marginalized people as well as cater for those that are living with disabilities. Leaders must not grow intolerant followers who exist to drown opposite views and criticism. It is with these beliefs, desiring progress and prosperity for all citizens of this great nation, that I as a leader and citizen propose the following. One, President Emerson Munangagwa must pick a cabinet that transcends beyond and above political party lines. Two, Zimbabwe's political body, legal fraternity and citizens 
must pursue a political party-free environment for at least 20 years after the term of this administration has expired. Outside of the GNU era, ZANU-PF has traditionally picked the cabinet from its pool of members of parliament. And technocrats, it views as sympathetic or aligned to it. Besides being retrogressive, this behavior entrenches political party divisions in our communities. Power is no longer viewed as a means to improve the welfare of the citizens, but a vehicle for party faithfuls to enrich themselves. President Munagawa should depart from this culture and show the country that he is a new broom on a new path. He must pick his cabinet on the basis of competence and not jobs for the boys. He must extend his hand even to members of parliament from the opposition. And every appointee must be subjected to a thorough background check and achievements in portfolio under consideration analyzed in detail. The citizens want a cabinet that will deliver inputs for the next agricultural citizen season. The citizens want a cabinet that will bring liquidity into our economy. The citizens want a police service that is above corruption and below the law. The citizens want leaders who will not line their pockets with national wealth. The citizens in the diaspora want to come back home with their talents and help us build a world-class nation. The citizens want change. While commending the president on setting up a commission of inquiry into the army shooting that killed six unarmed citizens, he must ensure that perpetrators of Gukra Wundi massacres are named. Apologies and restitution must be made to every affected family. Even as we move forward, the past cannot be forgotten until it is addressed and issues therefore resolved. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing while expecting a different set of results. We have tried democracy as prescribed by Western powers, and the results have been disastrous for us. Every Zimbabwean must now ask themselves difficult questions regarding our politics. Is the political party system working for us? If the answer is no, then what can be the alternative? I am proposing that we do away with political parties in Zimbabwe for at least 20 years after the expiry of the current administration's term of office. The former mayor of the city of Harare, his worship, Bernard Manyenyeni, has been saying this for a while. He is a man who has seen the ills and cancers of party politics firsthand, while trying to turn around the fortunes of the city of Harare. I solidly agree with him. Individuals willing to save their communities must stand up and contest in elections without the blinding jackets of political parties. Citizens will vote for councillors and members of parliament. Councillors in each municipality will vote for an executive mayor who may or may not be a councillor. Members of parliament will vote for a president who may or may not be a member of parliament. The president will then nominate his cabinet that must exclude all sitting parliamentarians and other public servants. This system will remove the aspect of jobs for the boys and introduce better checks and balance to the four pillars of our democracy. 
there are many areas that need interrogation and constitutional provisions to be considered before we can adopt a system of this nature. We have the minds required to deliberate on and propose a working format for this system in this country. The old man toiling in his field in Mandamawe deserves better. The woman sitting in Rizende Street selling tomatoes deserves better. The young man sitting on a sewage tank in Bari deserves better. The young girl walking to school with no shoes in Nyika deserves better. The baby delivered today at Mutare General Hospital deserves better. We can do better. You, the citizen of Zimbabwe, deserve a functional country. Progress and prosperity is your lot. It all begins with leadership, which puts your needs first. You do not need a go-between for your voice to be heard. You have your future in your hands. The future of your family and your friends is your voice. It is now time to speak, to demand that future, a future that is progressive and prosperous for all, a future where leaders are accountable to and work for you. Thank you.